Are we ever gonna meet Vegapunk? One Piece chapter... I forgot. Anyway, so we find out in the beginning what all those clones are, how they were created. It turns out Big Daddy Vince Smoke was a pretty smart scientist back in the day and that he was actually part of the team, with Team Vegapunk, when he was like running his operational laboratory. I wonder if they were part of the laboratory uh, that Frankie has stumbled on upon before the time skip happened, when Frankie had to rebuild himself up. Uh, you know, Vegapunk's laughing, man. E Vegapunk is everywhere when it comes to science or any type of technology, innovation. M when are we going to meet this guy, man? There's so much hype and build-up for Vegapunk, man. I just... When are we ever going to meet this guy, man? I've just been waiting so long to see who this Vegapunk is. Going all the way back to freaking pre-time skip. So, hope I'm just curious if there's like any kind of plot, uh, some kind of plot twist on who Vegapunk is. I wonder if it's someone we already know, if it's like his cover name or something like that. Can't wait to meet Vegapunk. So, these uh, clones were created, they found out how, basically how to create life. And the world government said, oh no, heck no, we can't have that. But, and then, so they arrested Vegapunk while the rest of the team scattered around the world. And Sanji's dad was part of that team. But they were still able to keep the blueprints, or still able to, you know, learn more on how to create clones. So basically these guys are, it, it feels like uh, I'm watching the movie uh, The Island. Uh, where the clones were created and they thought that everything else was destroyed and they don't know that they're clones. Well, it's basically what their soldiers are, is that they basically are um, wired to, to die and face death without any fear and to die for the Vince Smokes, but they don't know that they're clones. I think they probably believe that they've, they have a life of their own and that they were probably born natural into this army, but that's not the case. They were actually created. So I got like an island uh, movie type feeling from this uh, chapter and I thought like, oh, that's pretty interesting. and. Sanji, he just feels sickened by it, and he's like, you're making me sick. He pulls out a cigarette, I'm like, okay, like, that's gonna make it better. But, of course, a cigarette for Sanji is always make things better. Uh, then you get Ichiji and Niji coming in, and, uh, <laughs> then Sanji goes and tries to kick his brother's ass because he, uh, apparently he is the one that beat the shit out of Crusette, um, the cook, and they basically, f he beats up Sanji after he takes a kick, but I think Sanji was kind of holding back, I guess, because he also, he still threatened Zeph once more. And so the rest of this chapter is once he beats down Sanji and they're laughing at him, we get a flashback of more detail on what Sanji's life was like. And initially, I, th I thought that maybe all him and his brothers were also clones, but there were special clones specified to be taken apart from the dad. But that's not the case, so it turns out they were born naturally, you know, I was wondering, are they, are they clones themselves? Because the way he's talking down to them, it's as if, like, he created them through science and not through natural birth. And they act that way too. They're like, oh yes, father, they'll follow his orders. So initially Sanji was part of the regiment of being like a strong leader of this army. But he kept falling back and falling back. He was one of those slow starters, one of those late bloomers. And they just initially put him up as a failure. So the way they talk to him, as if it's as if they were actual clones themselves. But then the father comes in. And once the father learns that he's become a failure, he tells him you have to work twice as hard or 10,000 times as hard more than your siblings are if you ever want to be a leader of this army. And, he, and then he sees Sanji like feeding the rats, you know, and he gets like de like pissed off with that. He's like, he tells Sanji, your mother has been long past. Stop trying to hold on to the past of the dead. So just off of that sentence, you could probably tell that Sanji is probably a lot like his mother. Uh, that she would probably, maybe she was a good cook. Maybe she was really kind and nice. And Vince Smoke is just the complete opposite. He's a dick, man. I'm like, I don't know why she ever went for that guy if that was the case. But... Sanji, it, it appears the way when he tries to feed the homeless or he makes meals, it's a remembrance of his mother. So we now need a flashback for his mom. We know mom was in the picture at some point and that she has passed away. Sanji and his, his, and his siblings are not clones. They have a mom. And I really need a flashback for that. Like, does, how much do they remember of their mom? It seems to me Sanji does remember a lot because if he's cooking to remember her, then that's got to be the case. Oh, another thing. I like Reiju a lot more after this chapter. So it turns out when they're laughing at him, and Reiju was laughing at him too, she only did it because she didn't want to get her ass kicked by her brothers. So in the in behind closed doors, she would actually patch up Sanji and tell him, hey, I only laugh at you because I don't want to get my ass kicked. But it's not that I want to laugh at you. And she's all patching him up. He's all crying. I'm like, aw. So it shows that Reiju actually does care for Sanji. And then flash forward, and they apparently the dad wants to get rid of Sanji completely. He wants to forget about him. So he locks him up with this freaking helmet thing. And I'm like, that is fucking torture, man. Fuck this guy, man. And Sanji is just crying. The fact of the matter is that even though Sanji 
has been yelled at, berated, basically abused by his dad, is that he's still able to call out for help from his own father. It's as if he still believed that his father would act like a dad to him, even though he was crying to him and asking him, please forgive me, let me out. And then it just shows how much, like, how sense, how much children, like, still look up to their parents, even though they're, like, abusing them or being mean to them. They still, deep down, believe in their hearts that they'll be a father to them. And it's just, like, it's a sad moment for San Sanji to... For Sanji to to crowd to his dad that way, uh, so I think uh, then the father tried to pass it off as if like Sanji had passed away, and the siblings are like, oh, not that I care, you know? Did he really just die on us? Whatever, he was holding his back, holding his back. But you see, Rage, she doesn't say anything. She just stays there. And she has a blank face and she has the sweat mark down right here. And I'm like, that shows that Rage does care for Sanji. I would not be surprised if she was. She's the one that actually helps let him out. Either that, or she probably knows the truth of where where Sanji is being kept. She probably, she probably knows that Sanji isn't dead and that he's being tortured or held back in prison. And I'm almost certain she might be the one that helps him get out. She might be the one that lets him loose. But I don't think Sanji knows that maybe Reiji was the one that let him loose. I think she did it in a way where Sanji wouldn't know that she was the one that helped him help him escape the Vinsmoke family. That's what I'm getting at because she looks like she's like really conflicted in this chapter. She looks sad, like she just has a straight face, she's got a sw uh, sweat mark, she's got everything that shows that she still loves Sanji as a sibling and that she was probably the only one that ever cared for Sanji. And that might be, since she's the oldest one, she probably has uh, more memory of their mom than anyone else, including including Sanji, even though they're all, tw well, she, she, they're twins though, so she might have been the one most affected by her mom, and which is why she has a caring attitude. Because, like, everyone thought that, you know, maybe she's a bitch because she was laughing at him earlier. But if you look at her actions, even as an adult, she, she, she's definitely the one that gets along with Sanji the most, you know. She's, like, really amused by him and how his character has turned out. Maybe she, because she has pride in the fact that she was the one that let Sanji go. And she's like, this, that was for the best. I think I did the best decision of letting Sanji go. That's my prediction for uh, Reiju and what she possibly did. Maybe I can be com completely wrong, man. This chapter was pretty awesome, really sad, and you really get close to Sanji's character, and it just shows more of a exposure to what his life is. And we probably already knew knew that that was the case, but the fact that it's being shown to us, it's a really good uh, move by Oda to with an execution wise, where it's show don't tell, and I really loved about this chapter instead of it being like an information dump of them just talking about the past. So, great chapter, 4.5 out of 5 stars. Hope you guys liked the review. Fans right out.